Welcome once again to another edition of Trending. And on Trending today with me, Ezekiel, your host, is none other than the one and only Dexter Stewart, aka Blacks of the All Stars. Blacks, thank you for having me. It is an honor and privilege to be sitting in front of you here today, considering all that you have been through in the last few months. And it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you feeling this evening? This evening well, I'm feeling 85, you know, not, not, not full 100 yet. Right. Um, I, um, I'm just waiting on the doctors to say, um, go ahead, Lux, you know, so to jump back out to start recording, yes. start rehearsing. Then I will tell myself 100. But right now, I'm, uh, I'll stay at 85. Right. But so taking it slowly. But by looking at you, as always, always well put together, I think the average person, if they walk in and see you sit down there, didn't know. Well, you see blacks look like blacks. Well, you know? well, the belly go no. <laughs> plenty, that's, plenty. That's a good thing, right? Yeah, that is a great thing. Blacks, here's what. Since we're trending, and in this pandemic time, when so many people have downtime mm -hmm. to sit back, relax, reflect, and think about their future. Here's someone like you. I consider stalwart in the industry mm -hmm. of our culture who's been at the forefront for a long time. I want to go back just a little bit before we come forward to present time and ask some questions that I think some of the young people out there who look up to you may want to know. So I'm going to start in the earlies. What were some of your biggest influences to say, you know what, that stage is where I want to be, that might need to be in my hand, I have words to share with this world? Um, Mighty Shadow. Mm. Um, my mom, because my mom was a singer in my father's band. So I was actually born into music. My father is a musician, was a musician, um, had owned a band, Jerry Stewart and the New Songs, and then it was Jerry Stewart and the Slapsticks. So my mom was a singer in my father's band. So my mom was one of the biggest influencers in my life in regards to music. I used to box. Really? Yeah, yeah, I still could kickbox a little bit if my sons and them get out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I used to box, and the first time my mom come to see my fight, I lost. Man. So then she say, that's the end of your boxing career. Time for music. So I started singing in La Divina Pastora Church in Separa. I don't know if you know of that church. Familiar. I'm a point yeah. man, so it's a point man, right. and it's there it start from um, South Vocal Talent in uni called Santa Flora. Uh, a guy who is dead now, tall man, used to run a vocal competition, and um, the band that used to do the back end was Succession Brass, and uh, I came second. And um, they came to my mom and say, "But well, this guy could sing." You know, I sit down there in the corner watching my mom, just hoping she say yes all the time at 17, going on 18. And my mom turned and she said, um, you want to do it? I say yeah. And that's where it start. That is in 19, way back when, uh, a long, long time a long ago. Time ago. Yeah. And over those years, you've developed some, some strengths that have Ooh, allowed what? you to well, I've had, I've, I've, I've had help along the way. Well, I've, I I've always liked to help young people. I've helped, like, um, Kenny Phillips was the man who introduced me into banting. Yes. Kenny Phillips put me into Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. I used to sing with Cindy Lewis and Oscar B. Mm -hmm. um, after Succession Brass, at O.C. Backman and Upstream, that um, Doan Valley, um, Nyla's uncle, O.C. and Haley, we had a little band. We used to um, do we thing in town and in um, Gulf City and all the little malls. We used to do we little thing. And then I went to Byron Lee and the Dragonairs. Um, Byron Lee used to hire me every time he come to Trinidad on contract. I could remember the first weekend I worked with Byron Lee, I got $250. And I packed my clothes. And I came downstairs, I said, I mad, oh, oh. can I have $250? And as I come downstairs, I see Kenny. Kenny said, where are you going? I, I didn't send you here for the money. <laughs> I sent you here for the 
exposure and the experience. Right, to learn. I used to go to Jamaica. And then I went to Blue Ventures, where Bobby Kwan was very instrumental in my career to send me in front of the mirror with broomstick. Go and watch, watch, see, see if you like what, if you like what you're seeing. So, you know, Bobby Kwan and, and, and then, you know, move on to the All-Stars where I was more rounded and more, yes. more put together. I mean, obviously over all those years and all those people who played. Um, Atlantic also with Tony can't Prescott can't and, and Nicole Graves. There's so you many know, people who Real, played. real, 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 real. Plenty bands uh, have been through and have had help along the way. Always have help. And with all those people helping you to develop your abilities, what would you say are some of your biggest strengths? And at the same time, what could you pinpoint that maybe as a witness that you within yourself say, you know what? Yeah, that's something I need to work on. I really don't don't pinpoint no weakness in myself. Fair enough. Definitely. I have a lot of strengths. Yes. Uh, um, some of my strengths are people, but my biggest strength is my vocal ability. Man, I will sing your clothes off. <laughs> you don't have to tell me I've seen it a million times. I, I could really, really you sing it. You know, and, and I get that from my mom, you know? You know, um, and, and my mom used to give us Abby Blackman when I was with um, Upstream, that is Haley Blackman, Nyla's uncle, and O.C. Blackman. Abby used to give us voice training in Piparo. So I went through the tunnel. I went through voice training, speech therapy, the, the works for, for, for proper vocals. That is how it used to be done a um, long time. Long time when you have a soca, you just have to go to a ranger. After the writer, you go to a ranger, and then to the, to the producer in the studio. Now it's, now it's a whole different thing, soca, straight to the producer. As you say that, things have changed. Yeah, things change have is changed. The one change is the one concern in life. Yes? Yeah, yeah definitely. Now, we change a lot of times. Things may change that we would and will not like. Let's talk about the industry. Let's talk about the culture. Especially at a time with now with the pandemic where people have more time to reflect. What are some of the things that you truly love about our culture? and our music and our industry and some of the things that you really think that we need to change and work on. Okay, he took off his glasses for this one. Yes, we are trending. No, that's a kind of difficult question for me because over the years I've helped so many people. Um, Destra was my first student. Ola was my second student and the line goes, don't do it. Just yesterday I asked um, Teddy, why are you around me still? He said, um, because Teddy did an, an album that is great. He said, I still need uncle, I still need how to communicate with the people and how to take my time and talk to you. I love, I love my country. I'm very, very patriotic. I love, I love Soka. I will lose a foot for Soka. I will lose a finger for soca. I wouldn't lose a neck for soca. I would dead. No, you don't want to lose your neck. No, no, no. I really, really love my culture. And I, I love to see young people develop. I love to see young people, you know, um, I like to help young people develop. I've, I've helped a lot along the way. I always um, say when I reach 75, and I always try to keep my music in a way that I'll be able to sing until I'm 90. You know what I mean? And when I'm 90, I run back on my couch and say, I've contributed to my art form immensely. Well, maybe that, well, let me ask this question. And the question, maybe what you just said could be an answer, but you will clarify that for me. Mm -hmm. You say at 90 is when you would rock back and look at what you've done. Mm -hmm. So would, in essence, the time that you would have spent giving to and helping people and developing, would that be like a dream project for you in life? Would that be the ultimate dream project? Mm -hmm. No, 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 not dream, not dream. What would be the ultimate dream project for you then? Um, 
the ultimate dream project for me, boy. Wow. What you would like to accomplish? Um, maybe doing a song with um, Bungie Garden. Really? Yeah, the Viking, boy, the Viking. One of the illest, you know, yeah. illest lyricists yeah. of all time. He lyrics and I sing. You know, <laughs> that, that, that might be an ultimate dream project. But as I tell you, I've been a fella that really dream a lot. You know, I don't fantasize a lot. I don't, you know, like what's going on now in this pandemic, I will have my kids around. Mm -hmm. I will have my son around. I will, I will know if my daughter have a boyfriend. I will dig into the affairs. I, I, will, I will have my, my, my baby have a last girl that is nine. I will have them around. I don't sit down and have that time to really dream. Really? Um, I, will, I, will, I could cook. And in the video, say, well, we'll get somebody to cook for you. I'll cook. I could cook, and I now learn to fry my fish in coconut oil, and use olive oil and stuff. I will cook a lot. I always try to keep myself active. Yes. Really, you know, so I, I'm not a dreamer. Yes. I'm definitely not a dreamer. And um, you know, I'm much dream project for me. So then I guess living in the now and making sure everyone around you is safe and protected, that is, yeah. that is your project, yeah, that, right? That is, that, is, that is me. I hear you loud and yeah. clear. I hear you loud and clear. Now, you mentioned the pandemic, and of course, it is what's happening in the world, and you know, it's so sad. But in regards to our industry, there be no carnival coming up. We have the internet, we have social media. How do you think that has played a role and can still play a role in our culture now moving forward into 2021 and with all the pandemic? Well, social media is the thing now, no. And, 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 and I kind of have my hang-ups about social media. I, I, I have my pros and my cons in regards to social media. Yeah, to share? It, it, um, yeah, yeah. It, 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 as, as much as it could, could be good, it could be dangerous. I agree. That's how I see it. You know, but social media is the thing now. Um, I haven't posted or put nothing on social media for quite a while. But still, I believe I'm the most trending old man in the industry <laughs> right now. You understand? Yeah, I am, um, you know. Um, the pandemic, as I tell you about the pandemic, it, um, I see it sometimes as a blessing, a time to get close to your loved ones, a time to, to, to sit down with my daughter, just turned 20 last week. And, I want to know who is your boyfriend. If you have a boyfriend, what's going on in school? Why, um, why are you posting um, your lips? <laughs> you're doing, um, you're doing um, modern clothes design. So when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you do your stuff, post your stuff, post your dress, cuts, post your designs. I keep myself, you know, my daughter, my little daughter will sit on the bed and spell. I say, no, 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 it ain't no e in that. It ain't no e in that. My, my sons, I always keep myself involved with my kids. So the pandemic gave me that opportunity to get closer. Because um, my family had dwindled in the past 10 years from grandmother to mother to big brother to little brother. So I always try to keep close to the ones you love to my loved ones and i have some others that i love like my manager love she oh jesus <laughs> and you know it have some others you know right so I, I, as i tell you before i'm not a dreamer i don't dream uh, I, 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 I make things happen I hear that. try to make things happen if it can't happen i look for help to help me to make it happen well, maybe I could have rephrased that instead of saying dream, I could have said you had a vision. Something mm, that you yeah, saw, yeah. that here's what. I'm going to work hard to make this vision listen, a Listen, let me give you a story. Yeah, listen. When I joined Royal Cape All Stars, I used to sing one song. At the time, it was Kurt Allen and Derek C. Kurt Allen is the guy who um, is the only oil I'm working for this water coming. Mm -hmm. But when I get my opportunity to go outside there and sing that one song, hello. Hello. 
And one day, Papi just come and say, um, use the man. Now I actually run Roy K. Ballsters. Now, now the guys listen to what I say. Now the guy wait for me to come to practice to know what's going on, yes. what's, what's happening. So I didn't dream for that to happen. I work yeah, for that their respect. Yeah, earn that respect. Earn their respect. Yeah. And then I love all your bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show, everybody. Thanks to Blacks for being here. Yours truly, Easy Kel, reminding you on trending. Follow us TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere, every social media platform. I look forward for more interviews coming your way soon.